Hey guys, welcome back to the Food Emotions Podcast. I'm Anil, this is Ty, this is Aaron, and uh, we're back. Happy to see you guys again. It's been a fun little week. I think it's been quite slow from my perspective, but how's it been for you guys? Yeah, the week's dragging, man. Um, really? Ready for the weekend, watch Bad Boys 4. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So am I, surprisingly. I watched um, 1 to 3 yeah. uh, really? on the weekend, yeah. I'm a Bad you Boys fan. Man. I was going to ask you, though, <laughs> quickly, off the bat, Bad Boys or Rush Hour? Rush Hour, man. Rush Hour, I think, I think I'm a Bad Boys person. So, yeah, um, should we start off with some Knives Out news? So there's been some cast updates. If you haven't yet, check out our last episode where we predicted the cast and gave some some of our takes and who we think mm. should, could play in that film. Uh, so over the last week, uh, Mila Kunis, okay. Jeremy Renner and Josh Brolin have been announced. Okay. Uh, off the bat, what type of roles can you guys see them? Uh, Josh Brolin. Bro- Josh Brolin, yeah. <laughs> Mila Kunis. Mila Kunis. Interesting. I mean... She's quite a chameleon as an actress. I feel like yeah. she can do anything mm. from comedy. She could do. She can do serious stuff. Mm-hmm. Meg from, from yeah. her. Yeah, and, and then she can do voice <laughs> voice acting as well. So yeah, no, I'm quite excited for Mila mm-hmm. Kunis. I haven't seen her in in a project in a while, kind of this big in a while. So yeah, I'm excited. Jeremy Renner is gonna be back on our screens after um after what he's been through. So it'd be nice to and, see him again. And that one, I'm I'm really glad about to be honest because. Mm. I watched a few interviews. I think he was on Fallon or something and he was talking about it. And the accident was so terrible that he didn't ever think he was going to live, let alone be acting again. So is this his first role back? It is, isn't it? I assume it? it is, yeah. Yeah. So Unless he'd filmed some stuff before. Yeah. But mm. look, for him to be back acting in a movie mm-hmm. it is great news for him. So I wish him I wish him well and I wish him the best of luck in his kind of continued recovery. Mm-hmm. Honestly. What can this film do are thinking about this to be different from the other two so it doesn't feel a bit repetitive because a film similar to Death on the Nile which yeah. was a sequel to Murder on the Orient Express I found a bit repetitive and mm. I didn't, didn't really uh, I didn't really gravitate towards it as much as I did mm. the first one Yeah. so I was thinking I don't want this to happen to Knives Out so what do you reckon can be done to avoid that? It's hard, I guess. Do you feel like you got that from the first one to the second Knives Out? Do you feel no, any disparity? I don't. I feel no, I don't. The second one was so much better, in my opinion. You think? Mm. I really do. See, I'm the opposite. Really? I really mm. like the cast in the second you prefer one. prefer the first one over the second? I what, What's funny, I watched the second one first. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's the first I, one. And then I didn't yeah. watch the first one. And you still preferred the first and one? And I still preferred the first really? one. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's mad. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like the island and the whole game, I think the premise of it, was a lot more out there, mm-hmm. a bit less realistic. Yeah, I liked kind of the family vibe and it's the inheritance that seemed a bit more grounded. But the Glass Onion was good. It was a good watch, but number one for me was better. You know? I don't know. That's tough, man. I I really love the first one, but I like the second one quite a bit as well. It's hard to differentiate. I just like Ed Norton, man. I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um. I were to say, I think I'd probably still prefer the first over the second. Just yeah. because of how it starts everything off. Yeah, I don't know. Do you reckon, because the first one was family, the second one was friends. Mm-hmm. Do you reckon they go back to the family dynamic? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to see. Um, I just hope I don't come out of it thinking... That didn't need to happen. That didn't need to happen. <laughs> because I feel like they're going to make multiple ones of these if this one's successful as well. Mm. Well, the cast they've got, they're, they're leading it up to be one of them big films. I think year. that's the biggest selling mm. point of these films. Yeah. You get to see all these, act, like an all-star cast come together and they all they all usually play like different sort of roles than what they normally do. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, um, exciting stuff. Uh, next, some news coming out of Pixar. Uh, they're reportedly considering sequels to The Incredibles and Finding Nemo. Just for some context, uh, Second Incredibles 2018 grossed 1.243 billion on a 200 million dollar budget. That's insane. The 23rd highest grossing film of all time, the fastest animated film to gross 1 billion, which was surpassed by Mario and Lion King, and surpassed Toy Story 3 to become the highest grossing Pixar film. Wow. Finding Nemo itself grossed one, still 1 billion. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that was as successful in my eyes anyway. But See, Finding Nemo 2. Uh, Finding Dory. Oh, Finding Dory. Yeah, which was a sequel, I suppose. Mm. But yeah, I feel like both of them were good. I think when I, Incredibles 2 more so was good. Mm-hmm. It was never going to live up to the first one because of nostalgia and everything that we associate with 
because it was growing up and our child and all of that. But I still felt like it captured some of the magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a third one, I don't know. But it, it says a lot that a film made 20 years prior can still garner that much in the box office. That means the interest of that film, Incredibles 2, must have been sky high. And I think that's, that's the main reason we're getting a third one. Well, yeah. Well, the, the second one did so well. Yeah. It'd be crazy not to attempt the third. The nostalgia really did the numbers, didn't it? Mm. So my, no, I wouldn't say issue, but my thing with this is, you see how Toy Story 1 to 3 were all great films because they were made, not in a short time span, but they were made before we're in this era of uh, there being films just being made for the sake of it. Mm. And they felt like Toy Story 1 to 3 were genuine sequels where they were fought out meticulously, great stories, great character development, mm. and they were natural. So I feel like Incredibles 3 being made could be like, I imagine like nearly 30 odd years since the first one. I'm not as confident as I would be if it was nearer the time. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So I sort of messed up a bit. But, yeah. but what, like, I mean, Incredibles, we've only kind of seen it from the family's perspective. Mm-hmm. We've not delved into like, look, Jack Jack and Violet, mm-hmm. they were like young at the time. I don't think they were even teenagers at the time. Mm-hmm. What if they no. go and do... Uh, um, but I'll stop you right there. I don't want any of that. I know, but I'm saying, that I'm saying there's a host of of questions that could be asked. Again, they played into Jack-Jack in both films. Mm-hmm. Um, second one more so. Second one more so, yeah. But even the first one. Do you reckon it would be another direct continuation? I reckon it would be, wouldn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, think I hope not. Be good. I think it would be good to go again and dive into, I don't know, Maybe Violet and and uh, Dash, uh, Dash's story, mm-hmm. and see when they're older. Maybe I don't know. I think College be or cool. something. College or even as they're adults, and then they're they're trying to um, live up to their parents' That's name like or that. something. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, I don't know. And how about finding Dory? Uh, finding Nemo free. Sorry. The issue with finding films <laughs> yeah, is that okay. again, no, no, it's, it's the same thing as Taken. <laughs> How many times can someone get lost? They, How many times the second can one was alright because we found Nemo parents. Mm, now we've yeah. got to find Dory's. Yeah. I don't know about the third one. The turtle. Do you know what I mean? What I do you mean the turtle? It's going to be Nemo's son or daughter. Yeah, but why do they keep getting lost? <laughs> it's just Some laps of parents. No. <laughs> that's just the fish's life, bro. I get it, but I just feel like you don't want You're the talking... same thing over and over. And they did that with Taken. But where, this is a very different film to take. <laughs> similar sort of vibe where yeah. the, the same tragic normally doesn't even happen in someone's life one time, mm. let alone happens in the same person multiple times. But So do you reckon these films will be more commercially successful than their sequels? Oh, definitely. I, d- I doubt you that. You think they would? I doubt that. So you don't think Incredibles 3 would peak, uh, reach past Incredibles I think as, this, as the franchise gets uh, on, because um, there was such a difference between the first and the second, and it's like the first was so good, mm-hmm. the second everyone's you there. You got to think as well. This film won't come out for like, like four or five years. Are the kids in four or five years going to have any idea about the significance and have the attachment to these franchises that we did? What would be good is if they did a thing where Disney started transitioning into more mature content. Uh, yeah, they asking for do, doing like a the boys. Yeah, 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 would be good. Like, I mean, why can't they? You're dreaming, mate. You're dreaming. <laughs> oh, no, You're that. dreaming. If anyone's listening, make that happen. Or we made that happen. <laughs> Got an idea. Yeah. Um. That's hilarious. So excited! Yay, nay. I'm excited for finding Nemo free. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'd say so. For Incredibles, person. Um. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily excited for both. I'll watch Incredibles, <laughs> definitely. you probably watch the Finding Nemo. Probably, yeah. But yeah. I mean, the originals are so so good still till mm-hmm. now that I'm not really... I'm no, they, they do hold up. I think Incredibles is probably the best charted yeah. animation film One of, of yeah, all time. Definitely. That and Toy Story. Uh, moving on, uh, some news came out of Sony this week that they're looking to use AI to cut costs and produce films more efficiently okay. and effectively. Um so during the Sony investor call uh, q and in the past week, they stated that whilst box office has improved since the pandemic, it still hasn't reached the levels that it was at pre-pandemic. Um, so it'll be a way for them to be more efficient with their profit margins. Um, last year, the DreamWorks founder, Jerry Katzenberg, he predicted that AI will cut costs of animated films by 90%. 
saying that the days of 500 artists on an animated film, it will be 10% of that. Um, so now I feel like the integration is coming. Uh, it's important to distinguish that Sony are going to use it for production as opposed to creative work, mm -hmm. which is a big thing, I think. Um, but is it the beginning of the integration? Will it take one studio like Sony to show how they can integrate it successfully and everyone's going to jump on it and follow suit? I, I think they're going to have to. Mm -hmm. I mean... Someone's going to have to go for it, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and I think... I don't think it's going to be necessarily one leap for one company and then the rest are going to follow. I think all these companies already are having pr processes and procedures in place to get ready for AI. Mm -hmm. I mean, the majority of jobs nowadays, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a creative person, you are using AI in some shape or form to do something nowadays, mm -hmm. whether or not you even know or not. I mean... It's, it's happening and, and there's nothing we can do about it. Really. So at the end of the day, they're going to have to put in certain regulations and certain things. Which is something that I wanted to mention. Alive. Um, the most recent Writers Guild of America contracts, they decided that AI, they're going to regulate it in a sense that AI will be a tool used by writers, not a tool to replace writers. Okay. Yeah. Stating that studios won't be able to use or edit scripts already made and that only... The, the authors themselves can use AI to enhance their script, which I think is a big stepping, a big step in the right direction for protect, uh, protection of creatives. Yeah. What's worrying though is you said that it will cut costs by ninety percent. Animated insane. films is the okay, fun. but, but like, I mean, there's a lot of artistry that goes into these animated films. So mm -hmm. to cut nine, I'm guessing that means ninety percent of, as in the whole production budget. Mm -hmm. So that means that there, there, there will be less animators on there. There's probably going to be less, uh, I don't know, uh, rigging artists and, mm -hmm. and all these different artists that are within the pipeline of VFX. That is surely is going to impact the industry in some way. Mm -hmm. I mean, for them to cut 90% of their cost, it's not like they're shaving off 10% of their so cost. It's a prediction, man. Okay. But, but and probably an exaggeration. Yeah. But it will definitely make films cheaper, yeah. especially animated films. Yeah. Um, yeah but by doing that, you, I was going to say, by doing that, you're basically ripping to a degree, the soul of the film out of it. Well, it depends how they use it. Well, yeah, you're right. If, if, it's, if they it's are there using to it for assist production it, yeah. as opposed to creative work. So I went down the rabbit hole on how how people would perceive or predict that it would be used. So if we go through some different aspects of a production of a film. Mm -hmm. So in pre-production, uh, you've got stuff like storyboards uh, that could be all AI based, saves a lot of time, saves a lot of hassle. Mm -hmm. I think that's fine, but... I don't want to speak for people who are in charge of that. Um, artwork, you've already seen it in posters, the Civil War poster, yeah. mm -hmm. which could be on screen now. Um, the Loki season two poster, they used AI. And they're, they're, they were getting a, quite a bit of um, backlash on, I was seeing whether or not they should be using this stuff or not. Because <laughs> them images, they weren't necessarily uh, replicate. Uh, they weren't in the film really at all. It was mm -hmm. more for marketing sense. Yeah. So there's that, there's that conversation as well of how they're actually implementing these into production. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One that I saw that I thought was quite harmless to the creators was to be used as a forecasting tool to project, uh, to project and predict trends and uh, audience interests and stuff like that, yeah. which I think is harmless. Yeah, I think, and that's good as well. At least they can cater it a bit more, yeah. uh, with a bit more precision rather than, I guess, taking a long shot. Um, Sorry, the VFX, mm -hmm. which we've seen uh, opening eyes, Sora. That's, that took the world by storm a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. um, but on the flip side, it could also be helped used, used to help advance the craft mm. in VFX, make lives easier, mm -hmm. because you still got to have creatives dictating yeah. what they want and what they mm -hmm. want to see. There was actually a very interesting tool that I saw um, at a conference that was... Um, an AI based kind of like a Photoshop where what it is is you would actually do rough sketches and rough bits and bobs you plug that into the machine and use that as your source and it would generate based on your your prompt which is the, the animated Oops, the sorry. animated or the, the picture or the drawing that you've made mm. so I think that's interesting to get ideas and I'm not too opposed to having that for storyboards I know that there's storyboard artists that spend a lot of time on making beautiful images. And I mm -hmm. still think we need them because AI, again, it really just depends on what it's trained on. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, you can get amazing stuff, but I really feel like we shouldn't be losing that human Do touch. you predict that there'll be more regulations like the writer's one? I hope That so. will come in yeah. force I to think... pr pr uh, protect creators. My issue is, is that is it going to come fast enough before mm. it takes over the industry? Because if that happens and the regulation isn't in place, what will happen yeah. is there'll be a backlog of productions Again. that have used this tech and probably not used it in the right way or mm -hmm. violated people's um, rights and their likeness and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So I really feel like governments and whoever's in charge of this... It'll be the guilds. The guilds. They need to get a grip on, on that and start putting these contracts into people's um, contracts. Yeah. But then how do we feel about, going back to the original statement about Sony using it to become more efficient with their production? I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. inevitable. Yeah. It's inevitable. Like, mm. there's not really much we can do. If, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's about that competition. If Universal are going to start doing that, Sony has to do that or they're not going to keep up. They're going to go out of business. Yeah. I feel like anyway, like, eventually it's going to get to a point where everyone needs to shift that way. Same way streaming. Mm-hmm. It happened with Netflix. Everyone was selling DVDs. Netflix came, changed the game. And guess what? Everyone needs to become a streaming service now. Because if you don't, you'll be left behind. Blockbuster. Especially in an age where uh, box office returns are not guaranteed. by no, exactly. definitely not. So, so if they can cut their cost. They can mitigate margin. risk. And maybe that'd be a positive net positive. I do feel... I, I'm quite um Because them spending so much it. money is ultimately negative for both mm -hmm. in all aspects because it shies them away from doing stuff like that again mm. it's not a case of it's a case of them using the money in the wrong places I suppose mm -hmm. yeah. but you see the full guy budget which I think was a bit inflated but then it discourages them from making films like that again but yeah. if they can cut costs maybe we get mm -hmm. more original films they take more risks I, I just don't want to go to the cinema and see a AI generated film without um a clear um human touch mm -hmm. that's what i feel anyway i mean you could probably make an amazing film in ai and it would have all the heartstrings going and it would have everything perfect but i feel like i feel like it's a bit of a, a cheat i feel like you can make more natural and mm. more meaningful work when it comes from a human's touch i don't know that's just me personally um, I think it's it's very worrying. I think a lot of people in the industry are scared that mm -hmm. their job um, will get taken. Is that a stake? Yeah, I don't know. I think they've shown that they um they will if they have to go on strike. Yeah, which is what mm -hmm. they did, and now we're paying the price. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a as audience for the backlog and the delays and stuff like that. So I think that if it gets to that point, I can see another strike happening. Mm -hmm. Or then alternatively, I can see the guilds thinking, let's put stuff in place. Let's start protect, getting prepped for this year. Creators. I don't know how the studios will feel about that because ultimately it comes down to dollars, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting development probably in the next one or two years, I'd imagine. Yeah. Well, with the with the speed of AI, of course, I think you'd have to, you know. It's it's moving too fast not to. But let me ask you, as keep up. I just thought of this, as two filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers who operate on budgets, mm would you not be inclined to use AI to enhance your films? I do use AI to enhance things. There, there's plenty of times where within the last two years, I've used AI, mm -hmm. something that would take me hours to do before, mm -hmm. I can do in, in a couple of clicks. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. When it comes to Photoshop and uh, Photoshop AI, the generative feature, mm -hmm. that was it's game incredible, changing. isn't it? Yeah. For that to have come so soon. But how about in the, in the sense of like, you see what uh, Sora can do mm -hmm. yeah. with these crazy backdrops yeah. and landscapes. As someone who probably wouldn't at this point be able to do that with your, with your budgets, yeah. would you be inclined to test stuff like that out? I think definitely yeah. test it. There's, it's human nature to, to go and try things out, see if it works, see if it doesn't. Um, but I think at that point you will have to label it as that like AI content or something. That's another then, then, Yeah, I know. Because it's like without labeling that being AI content or whatever, I think we can, might be able to just, we might be lost in what's actually can human made a, or AI made. Can you see a category in the future for best <laughs> AI editing? I can. <laughs> yeah. I can. Best AI, best AI editing. I film. mean, if you look at it, like if I had a zero budget and I need to make a film and mm. it's like, 
I can use prompts and generate what I can think in my head onto uh, the computer without having to leave my room. Mm. I mean, that's interesting to to play around with. And I've, I'm sure there will be um, certain subcategories of- But I don't think we get to the point where you're getting kids in their bedroom making amazing films because I feel I like- do. I do. At some point you need that human connection and I feel like only humans can capture that emotion and uh, stakes and that that audience is crazy. Right now, I think I think it's going to get to a point. I don't want to be all conspiracy theory, <laughs> but I do think it will get to a point um, in within the next ten years that these systems and these algorithms will get so good mm-hmm. that they can make a film through math and through statistics and through all these learnings that it's had for over these years to make the best film audiences want to watch. I do feel that there is going to become a point where AI is going to be able to make films more efficiently and Mm -hmm. sometimes better than what humans can make. I do feel like that day will come eventually. I'm sad to say that, but that's that's my honest truth. Mm -hmm. The rate it's moving is so fast that I don't think we're going to be able to keep up with it. No, definitely not. We just need to hope. It's just hard because the studios will want to use it to, as we said... To cut costs. Yeah, but then the guilds are going to have to put stuff in place to protect the industry. I feel like what they need to do is, and I think they're already doing this, but I feel like they should implement AI into their existing tools so that AI is driven by the artist. Same Mm. way at me, if I was creating something on Photoshop and I wanted to change something on the side, instead of going modeling a new thing, getting backgrounds fading it, I could uh, highlight it, put the prompt there, get a generative something Mm -hmm. and carry on with my process in refining it to make it better. Mm -hmm. I feel like things like that to just elevate it and make things a bit easier is good. Or even giving a good foundation, yeah. Is is a bit too much. So you want what they've done with the scripts, what the Writers Guild have done with the scripts in that it can only be used to help uh, writers as opposed to replace them across the board. Definitely, yeah. I think that's fair. I I think, yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, we'll go into this more as stuff... I think uh, AI is such a deep topic to go through. And stuff unravels mm. and we learn more and we see mm-hmm. what's happening and we'll go into it more. But yeah, that was just a little a little look at the the future of AI in the industry. Um, let's move on to something quite positive. The Michael Jackson biopic has wrapped filming, okay. uh, releasing next year, 2025, starring Jafar Jackson, I hope I said his name right, uh, the nephew of the late Michael Jackson, Miles Teller, okay. who's playing John... Lanka, who I believe represented Michael Jackson, okay. and Nia Long. A budget of 155 million, estimated. Wow. Okay. Produced by the estate of uh, Michael Jackson as well, mm-hmm. who had done some other documentaries. Um, would it be the most successful biopic we've had so far? There, there, there's, a, there's a massive audience there, isn't there? I think everyone is going to want to watch this. It's an absolute yeah. pop star. Yeah. It, it, it's just hard. It's, it's really hard to say because a lot of biopics is hit or miss. I know Michael mm. Jackson is this big star and I am anticipating there's going to be a massive turnout for the film. Oh yeah, for sure. But I was a bit underwhelmed by the reaction to Bohemian Rhapsody. For me personally. You As was in underwhelmed. You were, yeah, underwhelmed. Like, I didn't even watch it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Well, commercially, I was going to actually do a little... Commercially, how it must have done well. I was going to ask you, can you guess the top five highest grossing bi- uh, musical biopics? Is that today? up there? That's number one. I'll give you that one. What 910 is that? million. That's See, insane. I didn't even know that. And I'll tell you, the gap between that and number two is exponential. Really? Uh, so then I think Michael Jackson's one then will blow that out of the wall. Mm-hmm. You think that will beat Bohemian Rhapsody? I mean, if you're talking about it from a queen, was it queen? Mm-hmm. No, it was a... Uh, it was queen. Yeah, queen, sorry, versus MJ. Mm. I do feel like MJ will, will top that scale in the majority of people. But mm-hmm. this, that was pre-pandemic. That's, I feel like okay. MJ is like so that legend since bringing that gravitas. I feel like it does. I feel like it does. I think our parents are going to want to watch that. Again, I, it, I feel like it just really depends on the the, the rollout and mm-hmm. marketing. Like, I feel like bottom line, the majority of, of the box office boils down to how good are they at angling the film at the right audience and right demographic. So yeah, for context, the Elvis put the second highest gross in uh, musical biopic. Mm-hmm. You got straight out of Compton below that. A Johnny Cash biopic. Really? I'm not familiar with. No, me work. neither. And no. Bob Marley, which was this year, mm-hmm. grossed 100, 177 million. 
And what is that? Top five? Yes, yeah, the fifth highest today. That's insane. Well, Elvis was last year. I'll second. be honest with you, I don't know one person that went and watched that Bob Marley film. Me neither. For that, for <laughs> if I'm being be, honest. For that to be top five grossing biopic. Mm. It's not a it's not a musical littered, biopic. Littered uh, subgenre, is it? It's not, but you think of biopic as in there's there's been them great biopic films. I mean what comes to mind was was it the Churchill one? The King who was it with Colin Colin Firth? That wasn't Winston Churchill. King's, what no. was that? That was King Edward or something. King Edward, King Edward. yeah. Like there's a few. There was an Abraham Lincoln one. Yeah, mm-hmm. Daniel well. Lewis won Best Oscar for that. Yeah, so there has been these these big films. Stephen Hawking one. I forgot what it's called. Theory of Everything. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Are we going to experience biopic fatigue? Oof. I think we spoke about this before, right? Quickly, is Oppenheimer a biopic? It's it's a Somewhat, fiction. Yeah, mm. I was gonna say it's a dramatized. Right, let me narrow my question to musical biopic fatigue. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a tough question. I'm going to say maybe, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, but also no. It's, it, is a, it is a really tough question because it depends on who you're going to have the biopic on, right? Because if it's not... Running out of stars. Yeah. <laughs> but MJ hasn't been done. Yeah. And MJ is one of the biggest. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Elvis was MJ recently is the biggest. done. MJ, yeah, he is the biggest. Mm-hmm. So... Queen's been done. Who else is there? Abba. Mm-hmm. Abba, Mamma Mia. That was... That's not... Not a biopic, not... But it was uh, using their music. Prince? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, the Beatles? I'm sure that's been done. Not to the I scale. think there was like a, a TV series that come out Oh, there's recently. a film... They got announced. Sam, I think Sam Mendes is doing it. Yeah. We spoke about it ages ago. He's doing one from every perspective of every member. All four yeah. members. Yeah. Who um, remember this? Straight out of Compton was good. Mm, nah. Uh, well, was... I would say that was the best film mm. out of all of them I've seen. That's a great film. Like, that doesn't even feel like... It almost doesn't feel like a, a biopic. Mm-hmm. It feels like a legit a film. Mm. But then, you know, it's weird. Really odd. Would you class something like the Notorious B.I.G. or like Two yeah. Parks film as a musical... Uh, that stinks, that film. All lies on me. There yeah, was a lot, lot of hype behind that film. The as story well. behind how the actor got it was quite cool. Yeah. And he just looked like him, and he got. I feel like he was working in a clothes shop or something. He just got, so picked up. Like he just got casted. Yeah, but that film stunk, man. For being real. What about the B.I.G.? I haven't seen that one. Oh, okay, I enjoyed that one quite a bit. I haven't that was, seen that it. That was a good no. film. Yeah. Yeah, they had um. What's come out recently? They had Back to Black. I don't think that. How was that? Because that was on my list that I didn't mm, want to watch. That was really anticipated. Wasn't I didn't it? go and watch it. Had some good stuff. I'm not a massive Amy Winehouse fan, so I went yeah. in there. I knew about Light. her. I mean, grew up mm. about, grew up with her sort of thing. It just wasn't the best film for me. Mm. Um, what did I saw? I saw the Whitney Houston one. I want to dance with somebody that came out last year. Do you not think that, that, that the, the MJ one is the only one that's kind of really appealing to our generation a bit more? Because Elvis. Yeah, but not much younger than us. No, not much younger than us. But I mean, we're still in that bracket. Yeah, as mm-hmm. in Elvis. Elvis had passed a long time before. I know his music had carried on into into our lifetime. Michael mm-hmm. Jackson more so. But Michael Jackson was alive. I remember when Michael Jackson died. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I don't remember. I don't I remember, remember where I was. I was on a school trip in like year four or something. Yeah, mm. it's crazy how you know where you were when, when Michael Jackson died. That's the mm-hmm. sort of level we're talking about. Do you about. think mm-hmm. the film gets into that, the nitty gritty? Or do you think it's like more of a, his rise? I, I, I Ooh, hope. I wondered, I wonder. It's going to be ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Every film has that. But I wonder what... He's lived such a crazy life. I yeah. wonder what bits they're going to take. What aspect they're going to take. He's had so many crazy moments. From hanging the baby over. Like, I mean, he's mad moments. It's produced by his estate. So, yeah, it's going to be... Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously, they're going to keep his image intact, intact. But also, there's a lot of things that he's done that mm-hmm. is general knowledge that whether or not it was in a film or not won't affect him. Mm-hmm. But I'm curious to see what they do pick out. I mean, they could even just get a little segment of his life rather than from Jackson 5 to obviously who he became as a massive pop star. Yeah, I think pacing is something I always worry about with these mm-hmm. films. And Back to Black in particular. It's pacing and it's also runtime. Yeah, I just feel... Do you not think? Some back, some of these films do feel But I think I'd rather the long runtime than a short runtime and bad pacing. Yeah, no, like, I agree. Back to Black, I did not... I was not feeling the pacing... Um, but yeah, it remains to be seen, obviously. The Elvis, I think, was good, though. I mm. liked Elvis. Um, 
But yeah, so everyone's excited for that, I'm guessing. Yeah, of course. Who, like, who isn't excited for a Michael Jackson film or a biopic? Or that's what I'm saying, I think it's going to build it absolutely. Mm-hmm. Everyone. Something I know you're excited for, Ty. National Treasure Three. It's being written. Yeah. John Turtle Torb, the director of the first two, he says that if it gets made, Nick Cage is 100 percent returning. I feel like hot take here. I feel like National Treasure is one of the greatest live action Disney films mm. of all time. I, I feel like that franchise has heavily slept on. Uh, Nick Cage in that film, amazing. Um, his uh, co-star as well. I can't remember his name, but comic genius was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the dynamic between them three was We're unmatched. going to steal the Declaration of Independence. I mean, that line it's so absurd. Me every time. It's so, it's so absurd. <laughs> But I feel like for some reason Nick Cage grounds it in reality. I believe Nick Cage is. Can the you guy. see Nick Cage in Knives Out? Yeah, I've just thought I think that I could see it. Yeah, he needs to get he needs to get on the phone to his agent. That would be, <laughs> be good. Um, the first Quick. one, two thousand four, grossed mm. three fifty worldwide. Second in two thousand seven, uh, yeah. four fifty, four fifty nine actually. Mm-hmm. So they're done all right. Would it be streaming or cinema? Ooh. Cinema, sure. Well, it would have to be cinema. I with with a track cinema, record like that, they would, they would have to put it in cinema. I hope it's cinema, but I wouldn't put it past Disney to, to, to <laughs> send that straight to um, Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Do you think? It depends what sort of film they're making. Mm. Are they making that blockbuster they're trying to do movie cinema or are they just trying to do that cheap Quick. and cheerful, let's get them back into Cash Disney grab. Plus? I don't know. That's mad. Um, yeah, I mean... Again, the cast was amazing. Hopefully, they keep the same cast. They left it too late. Uh, I feel like they have. Mm-hmm. I feel like... So, what are you cool with not be having a third one? Yeah, definitely cool with not having a third one. I feel like sometimes it's okay for a film to stop at two. Yeah. We don't automatically need a third or yeah. fourth one. I feel like if they're going to ever do a third one, they should do it in a sequence where, look, the first one came out in 2004. Mm-hmm. The second one came out in 2007. And then 2010, bang, you slapped it. Yeah, 2010, one. 2011, have the next one. Anything past 2015, look, we're 2025 nearly. And they're think, rebooting. Uh, yeah. And they're, I think it's a bit too long. But look, I'll go watch it either way. I'll go watch it. So what did you think about it? You're not not a massive, are, you, are you not a massive fan of them? Well, I'm not a big fan of Nick Cage. That's it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you watch it recently or something? I watched it recently with you. I watched one and two with you. Yeah, they're they're, you they're, they're magical films. I would say. What do you prefer? I'm gonna say the first one. Me too. I, I like do like both. the second. One. I like them both. Do, do you remember it from like childhood? When do you remember? No, because no, I watched them maybe around a year ago. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think. Trying to, they both got that good stuff. Yeah. I like the Declaration of Independence yeah. angle, but I also like the cave angle in the second one. Um, when the water's closing in, they got to get out. Yeah, mm-hmm. what was that? Is was it in Washington? The that's the first one, no? Was it the second one? England? They go to the the mountains. Yeah, what's oh, that yeah. mountain called with the faces on it? Oh, Mount, Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't meet. I like the the clues, the mystery, the uh, the, the archaeology side mm-hmm. of things, and then you've got obviously someone trying to bad guy trying to steal it as well, and he's acting in the greater. For the greater good, but he's got to do bad things to get there. Some modern day Indiana Jones. Yeah, I mean, again, th- that's one of my favourite childhood films, so mm-hmm. I'm excited. Mm. Something that won't be getting remade. Two films. Superbad and Pineapple Express. Evan Goldberg says they're not revisiting them. Mm-hmm. So that there are a few things left best untouched. Yeah. yeah. Seth fair. Rogen add in. Yeah, exactly. Let's fucking leave it as it is. I think that, that comes, was not my words. <laughs> I think that comes out of a place where they know they're not going to be able to match it, so mm-hmm. they're just doing the sensible thing and leaving. And it. that is such a relief. Oh, I yeah. do as much. Super is my favorite top five films. Mm-hmm. I don't want a second one. No, nah. neither do I. Especially when who would even take it? The trajectory that Jonah Hill has gone on, I can't see him getting back into that mold. Mm. I really can't. Yeah. And it wouldn't be funny. They're, yeah, it's been like twenty years. Again, they need to start making origi- more original stuff. Mm-hmm. Like you can't make comedies no more, though, man. <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? They're too. They're too, too safe. You've got to worry about everything now. Mm. I, I do feel like within the coming years there are going to be this uproar and uprising of filmmakers that 
are going to be funded by a different company, a sort of A24 company, mm -hmm. that the rules are going to be make the funniest, crudest comedies. And I think hopefully them films are going to start yeah. getting made again. Is that a hope or is that a prediction? It's a hope. That's a hope. How about so a prediction? A big hope. No? Can you see that? I, I'd like to think that would happen. A prediction is, I feel like, if someone's out there with a lot of money mm -hmm. and wants to make a film studio to make yeah. a lot of money back, I feel like a good idea would be to, to grasp this market right now. Because wherever there's one, wherever the pendulum swings one way, mm -hmm. there's another thing. I don't know what the phrase is, but I'm <laughs> kind of shit. But the phrase, <laughs> the, basically, what I'm trying to say is there's, there's people on both sides of this thing. Some people like yeah. more safer things and more harmless sort of content and other mm -hmm. people like things that are a bit more out there and a bit like oh it's like going to a comedy gig mm -hmm. they push the boundaries yeah i think there needs to be a company or a production company or some someone in industry comes in um who says don't worry about the share price i'm the almost funny yeah mm -hmm. and i think actually that will boost their share price oh, yeah. they'll be able to make I think films within the next couple of years it's more of a possibility mm -hmm. i feel like now that you said it, I can see that happening soon, but it takes one person to be like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what's, what happens normally with trends like that is one person will end up doing that and then they, that will have success and the chain would reaction be, will be that. Would you be content if it going back to like the level of, let's say, Weird and Miller's 21 Jump Street times where they definitely weren't as, as crude. crude as your American Pies, mm -hmm. your super bads, but yeah. they were still funny? Within reason. I mean, they were really good films, them films. Mm -hmm. But again, I do feel like on a tier list, the ones that you you named after, the super bads, mm -hmm. the, the OG ones, they just had so much more character as films. Even Hangover. I love, Weird and Miller's is one of my favourite comedies of all time. <laughs> but it's still, there's that line that they mm. walk down where yeah. they're not pushing it too far. They're still walking this night. And it's funny. It's mm -hmm. funny enough. I would have liked it if they pushed it a tiny bit more. Really? Why not? And that is, them pushing it a bit more is the level of your American Pie. Mm -hmm. your super bad. Yeah. Uh, maybe even Hangover. Maybe. Um, so what do you reckon, do you reckon we could go all the way full circle or full circle 65, 75% to the 21 Jump Street level? I almost think, well, this could be a prediction or it could just be a, I think this might happen. If obviously at some point there is going to be someone who's going to turn around and be like, I'm going to make a crude comedy or I'm going to bring it back to how it used to be. Um, but I don't really, I lost my train of thought. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sorry. Is it, is it us where we're not being exposed to these comedies that are being made? No, because mm. I, 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 I don't know. I can confidently say. Because if there was, you would mm -hmm. know about it because of the fact that there's hardly any mainstream comedy. I guess comedy that's films. what I'm thinking, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. questioning, like, how has it come to be that there's not these films being made? I'm mm. racking my brains and I can't think the last comedy movie. Nice Guys, maybe, but that was that was a different sort of... as a buddy cop comedy mm -hmm. where they're still, they're still flying about mm -hmm. because they're not... The nature of them is not different. I'm talking high school humour mm -hmm. where it's like... And no, they've got a bit of budget behind it. Bit of budget. No, you mm. don't even need a budget for a comedy yeah, film. Yeah, it's true. No. You don't need a What's the budget super bad? I bet it's not big. But like the budget in the sense that look, I could make a film right now, buddy comedy, like a funny mm. film. It's not going, you need you need someone to invest in you to yeah. be able to even get you in the cinema, to get mm -hmm. you on these stages. So it's like, I just feel like either we're not seeing them, which I don't think it is that, or they're they just don't not exist being made. No more. They don't exist. Yeah, it's sad. No. Let us know what you think in the comments and what was the last real crude comedy film that you've seen that, that came out recently, recently. It that it came out within the last five years because I can't mm. name one. I wouldn't even say a crude comedy, just a good comedy. I'm really trying to think. Are we missing a film that came out? No, nothing. nothing's come out. Right along to... That is not that level though. No, no, definitely not. That's just a... It feels a bit blasé and... Ha 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 he he hoo hoo The full guy, but that's not all... all the all the way of comedy there. is it no would you not it has, it has a lot no, of comical not, aspects to it's it got, it's a comedy mm. but I mean it's not crude comedy yeah I'm talking about the comedy where it's like you don't know if you can you don't know if you can watch it with your parents sort of comedy <laughs> yeah 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 like, you don't even know you should be laughing yeah at like, like I hate that, that's the one, sort of the comedy. them ones oh yeah 
Yeah, man. The list is just not... Not, not coming along. Let us know. No. Yeah, anyway. Um, Would you class Knives Out as a comedy? No. I'm I know scared. they try to be. Um, I wouldn't class it as a comedy, but it's, it's comedic aspects. Yeah. yeah. Then that's that's different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want a full-fledged comedy. Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah, that's that's not on that at all. Sausage Party. That was hilarious. That was tapped. It's, it's, that's what, it's so tapped. That. They're it's making fun. a second one, aren't they? Really? Yeah. I say I didn't even know about that. Um, I guess some films do get sequels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another film that got is starting filming is a film called Project Hail Mary. I don't know how much of you lot have read about this. Um, it's starring Ryan Gosling and Sandra Hula, who Hula. starred in Anatomy of Four and Zone of Interest. Oh, okay. Um, she won an Oscar, I think recently did she win I'm not sure I don't uh, think she did I think she got nominated but um, it's directed by Chris Miller and Phil Lord who done the Jump Street movies mm-hmm. done the Lego movie and wrote the Spider-Verse films um, it's about basically it's an adaptation of a book um, by the same author who done The Martian which also got adapted it's about an astronaut trying to save Earth whilst alone in outer space um, so it's a space film mm-hmm. but what I have really found interesting was a cinematographer Greg Fraser, who done Dune, The Creator, and Batman. Yeah. It's an Amazon film, MGM film. It's They've got the crew together. They've got the cast. I think this could be a spectacle. Yeah. And I mean, Greg Fraser is in high demand right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's jumping around the biggest productions. Yeah. It's being filmed for IMAX as well. Though. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's probably why they've got him. I mean, he is jumping from production to production. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's in there. It looks like they've got the direct, perfect directors proven directors they got their cast yeah. mm-hmm. two people on a hot streak they got, they got the Sounds premise good. it's all there in the yeah. book mm-hmm. what I've read actually it says sci-fi drama but then also it had horror drama is it a horror? well the horror could be about Earth and what know. he's trying to save it from or what she's it's interesting because the, the author Andy Weir mm. yeah um I found it interesting how his last book, The Martian, got adapted as well. Like, he must be a bloody good author. Mm. If... I have to start opening up these books. Yeah. <laughs> did you? How do you not feel about the books, like the Dune books? Did you ever get in tempted? I've, I've never read. I'm not an avid reader. Me neither. I'm not a fiction reader. Yeah. I mean, I would love to to pick up a book and read. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> that again, sounds so crazy when you say. No, it. no, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. I, I don't think I've You're ever a movie guy, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. You're a visual learner, or like you. Visual, you, you, learner. visual <laughs> learner. I don't know about learning. It's but not about yeah, but I just again, it doesn't, it doesn't come naturally to mm-hmm. me to pick up a book and read. Yeah, that's just but yeah. Back to the film, I think this is this is some exciting stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you have got the impressive cast or crew, space film. I do like I do like the old space film. Um, I really like Armageddon, which is an old school one. Uh, the Martian was really good. Interstellar. Uh, yeah, I think it's a genre that is exciting ultimately. And I think they've got the stars for it to put butts in seats. So yeah. I've got a very interesting bit of news that just come out. Okay. So Peaky Blinders movie officially gets greenlit at Netflix. Movie. Movie with mm. Killian Murphy starring and producing. I haven't seen wow. Peaky Blinders, man. Neither have I. But, but I'm gonna have to watch it. But do you know what? You know you know about these things that just Mm-hmm. Weave its way into pop culture. Peaky Blinders is one of them things. I mean, it was that, bro. Is that? I swear it was a week. A week went by, and then all of a sudden, everyone's watched Peaky Blinders. I'm like, what's going on? I haven't. Seen, I need to watch it, but me neither. I haven't seen it. And yet, the production but... is set to to begin later this year. Okay. Um, from the script by Peaky uh, Blinders creator Stephen Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be made in association with BBC. And from what I remember, the original series They're was BBC. made. BBC. Yeah, it was a BBC but Netflix, series. They're just going to put it on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. I, I'm guessing off the, the back of the large success of Oppenheimer mm-hmm. that... Killian Murphy. And, and on top of that, the series being so good. He's Blinders, um, going to go crazy. A, do you know 28 Days Later? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that? I haven't seen it. I've, I've seen, seen it and... You definitely have seen images from what it is. There's, oh yeah, uh, London is empty and Killian mm-hmm. Murphy's walking. They're making a the second. Home. No, I've yeah. seen I've seen twenty of these. Yeah, later. Killian Murphy's remembered. coming back. I think Aaron Taylor Johnson's in it as well. Yeah, for the second one. Hey, let's go. Um, so they're making one. Killian Murphy. Yeah, you rolling, man. You rolling. Mm-hmm. There is interesting projects going on. Again, mm-hmm. they're just all in the in the phase of in the pipeline somehow. Yeah. So 
again, we're just going to have to wait. I feel like the film industry is a waiting game as well. Mm-hmm. We're getting Deadpool this year and Wolverine. Next year is going to be something else. So keep on coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I've got some other small stuff. Uh, new actors and actors. Did you guys check that out? Variety. Mm, no. I did indeed. The Robert Downey Jr. One I didn't watch them because none of them really... The films and the actors. Well, who was Robert Downey Jr.? Mark Ruffalo. Uh, the old one was Mark Ruffalo. His one was a Jodie Foster now. Jodie Foster. And do you know why I watched that? I recently watched again Panic Room when uh, I think David Fincher film uh, about a, a break in that happens in this mansion and they've got a safe room. Watch it. It's an amazing film. Um, and Jodie Foster is in it. Mm-hmm. And she was amazing in that. And I was just like, Robert Downey Jr., Jodie Foster. Let me hear what they got to talk about. What are your, um, some of your favourite ones from the past? Um, I've got so many. I like the Zendaya and um, Andrew Garfield one. Uh, let me let me actually go. I like, my memory. I've got, I got, I listed some. Margot Robbie, Killian Murphy. That was good because of the fact that they just come off Barbenheimer. Mm-hmm. So it's good actually seeing them discuss that. Uh, Adam Sandler, Brad Pitt. I like that one. <laughs> that was a good one. I um, really enjoyed that one. Robert Downey, Mark Ruffalo, Ben Affleck, Michael B. Jordan. That was a good one. And um, Emily Blunt and Anne Hathaway. I like that one as well. I'm trying to go through. There was some. Uh, you know what? Really I would, I've never seen a single one of these. You need to get on it. You need yeah, to amazing get on bits of content. That's, that's insane. Oh, yeah. Timothy Chalamet, Emma Stone one. That was interesting. <laughs> They're really good because they just insights into creative processes, how these guys work, the experiences they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it's some of the best PR for their own projects yeah. because they don't tackle it in a way where it is a promo and you do see the... But they're, it's like promo the little they want to do. Exactly, because mm. they're talking with a fellow actor and they're both successful and they dive into their life. And it's a bit more personal than one of them junkets. I'll ask you, Ty, mm-hmm. I was going to ask both of you, but how important are they for fans? I mean, I don't feel like the industry would be the industry without what comes with it. It's not just the film. Mm-hmm. It's about the, the packaging the film comes More so in. now. Yeah, of course, because of social media. I Stars know, are more personable than ever, aren't they? A hundred percent. Like I remember b- back, I'm saying back in the day, but like even 10, 15 years ago before YouTube was at the level where everyone's a YouTuber now. Mm-hmm. The amount of content you got, you had to, I was going through DVDs to get behind the scenes and oh, things. Yeah. It's just like, that's all you had. Trying to find the extra bits. I do yeah. feel like the um, magic of then film. Then talking about yeah, the commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the magic of film, for me, Is has that a good or bad thing, though? It has disappeared. Because I guess it's positive in that if I want to watch, if I want to watch all things Adam Sandler, I can yeah. just type it on YouTube and I've mm-hmm. got hours on end of yeah. his yeah. press junkets, interviews, yeah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But then it feels like, are these stars not what, the same definition of stars as they were 15, 20 years ago. They're not. They're not. Because it's different now, yeah. Before it used to be the television shows, mm-hmm. the Ellen, the general show, like Oh yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's that, that sort of like now it's everywhere and anywhere you're mm-hmm. getting and you're getting the content. And social media as well. I mean, for me as a fan, I the like listening changed. to their stories. And I like mm-hmm. that the industry now is a bit more open where people are discussing how they got there, mm-hmm. their trials and tribulations. I like to know the behind the scenes in the industry. Mm-hmm. Do you know why I prefer these? Because they're not just interviewers asking the same old questions mm-hmm. yeah. or doing stuff where you know that the actor doesn't really want to be and they're doing it out of obligation. It's two people who, two peers at the end of the day, mm-hmm. who are there because they respect each other's yeah. craft and they can have a discussion on like a higher level than you could have of an interviewer. Definitely. Which is where there's a void in the space for sophisticated interviewers yeah. <laughs> like. but, but like like ourselves <laughs> um, Variety huge fans yeah. Yeah. Of, and, I, uh, and I think whoever picks and match makes these interviews pat yourself on the kudos. back kudos mm-hmm. yeah because I don't know it works I mean yeah. there's some really juxtaposed actors on there mm-hmm. but they just seem to get along perfectly so yeah well done one of the many reasons we love Variety yeah um, yeah I think that wraps up everything this week. Uh, like I said, bad boys, little preview. Mm-hmm. Excited? We spoke about it at the start, but... I'm not that excited. I'm yeah. excited to go to the cinema. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to watch uh, a more light film because mm-hmm. the last few films we've been watching, apart from Full Guy, have been a bit more um, serious. Yeah. So... What did we watch last time? Furiosa. Furiosa, yeah. yeah. And then Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Yeah, they were um, deep. There's some deep films. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Laugh a bit. Yeah. Do you know mixes. one thing? I don't know if you lot saw this. Uh, I think it was today. Will Smith posted something on his Instagram, like a behind the scenes shot of yeah, 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 yeah. a camera rig he had attached to his yeah. body where the Sick, gun man. would obviously pivot. Looking like Call of Duty. Looking like a... Po- yeah. That was... I was like, wow. Is he going to get a credit for camera up? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I don't think he needs it. I don't think he needs it for his pocket. But curious. I'm going to watch the credits and see. Yeah. We'll, we'll sit through the credits and we'll... we'll <laughs> yeah. We'll give... Um, our re- reactions to that next uh, mm-hmm. next episode. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm looking forward to it though. It would be that's just laugh, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. They're so funny. The first two in particular. Mm-hmm. First two in particular. Yeah, because the third one was a bit unhinged. Yeah, yeah. They just lashing out mm-hmm. swear words and yeah. jokes, and they, they got a really good dynamic. Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah, it comes back to that. But I would say the story actually looks quite good. Mm-hmm. I would say it's re- it's a recycled one. Yeah, where it's like the guy's been framed and all of that, but it was quite good, better than the last one. I'd say. Mm-hmm. Anyway. But, but yeah maybe this one's a bit more self-aware we'll see hopefully Will Smith come back I'm here for it <laughs> <laughs> we'll see about that <laughs> but yeah thank you very much for tuning in to this week's episode of Freedom Motions if you haven't already subscribed make sure you comment and drop us a like um, also go check out our shorts content and our TikTok and we shall see you on the next episode